But Bill Nye says science is political. And I'm thinking to myself, how can science be political? Is science not like math? One plus one equals two. Something is empirically true. That's it. Yes, it is. There are no politics to it. But then you know what? I interviewed Sidney Perkowitz, professor emeritus from Emory University. And he said, you know, Coca-Cola, they pump in millions of dollars into Emory University. And we're very kind to Coca-Cola. We don't produce studies that say things negative of Coca-Cola. Science is not exactly pure. I agree. Well, science on its own is very pure as a system. And you're right. Universities now are being sponsored by corporations. They have to because our governments aren't supporting them fully enough. And that's sad. But many universities are also saying, look, we're doing the research. It's going to be open. We're not going to do proprietary research for you. We'll do the fundamentals and then you take it from there and then you can go proprietary with it. We'll do the molecular biology. We'll do the chemistry or the physics and, and help you develop something. But we're not we're not going to be part of your proprietary info because science should be open. And a lot of universities are trying to do that here in Canada. I know the University of British Columbia has a big policy on that. The other way where it becomes political is if the science affects society. So we have an issue where science looked at our atmosphere and said, you know, some of the gases that we're putting into the atmosphere, these greenhouse gases are heating it up or stuff that was coming out of spray cans in our air conditioners is destroying a gas called ozone. Then we need to do something about that. We need to have a law that bans those substances so we'll stop hurting the atmosphere. Now with the ozone, that was successful. That was successful. And, there, and it happened right here in Canada, the Montreal Protocol. The world got together, said, look, these things, these chlorofluorocarbons that are used in spray cans just as a propellant, just to push the stuff out, your air pressure or whatever, they're harming our atmosphere. Let's get together and ban them. And they did. There was a ban on them. And we, we've now preserved the ozone. Level. So there was a case where the science had to go political, say, we've got to make a law about that so that these things are illegal. Well, now we've got scientists saying greenhouse gases are hurting the atmosphere. We should do something about them to reduce them. But we have a gigantic industry that says, wait a minute, I'm, I'm making a whole lot of money here. We got the automotive industry. We got the, the drilling industry. We got the pipeline industry. We got the refining industry. We got everybody that's involved. There's such a big elephant in the room. It's not going to change overnight. So it's difficult. To when the scientist then has to go to the politician and say, how are we going to make this law? The politician has money coming from these big corporations or other pressures. The science is only one voice in a very large issue. So that's when it becomes political. Has science always been political or is this a relatively new development? No, it's always been political. Come on, look at, look at the, the race to the moon. That was entirely political. Hmm. You know, it was it was because the United States and the Soviet Union were trying to one up each other. And what they were really trying to do is get the military high ground. That goes back to, you know, the da Vinci inventing weapons. Leonardo da Vinci, in addition to being a great artist and a great inventor, he also developed guns and, and military machinery. So there the science was trying to help build better ways to kill each other. He would have been funded, essentially, for that, and in his spare time, he can do his art and make his little funny machines. That's right. That's right. So wow. our race to the moon was to build uh, to build bigger and bigger rockets, because when you can put something into orbit, you know, first first our guns were, were close. You think you think about hand, uh, about combat, uh, about he, how humans fight each other. First, it's hand to hand combat. and You're right in the face of your opponent. Then you develop a store, a sword or a club. You can take a little step back and you might not get hit. And then guns, we, get, we step way back, back to the whites of their eyes. And then uh, we, we developed cannons. Now they're further away. They're getting close to the horizon. Then giant guns came along. They could shoot over the horizon. So you don't even see your enemy anymore. And then we had uh, airplanes and, and rockets that could go over the horizon like the Germans did in World War II. They were going from Germany to England. Well, if you can put a weapon into orbit, you can drop it anywhere on the planet, anywhere. So now you've got the ultimate high ground. That's a huge threat. So that's what Sputnik was all about. The first Russian satellite, the Russians proved or the Soviets proved they had the capability of reaching orbit. The Americans did not. So then they had to say, OK, we'll, be, we'll build a big one, too. In fact, we're going to build one so big, we'll hit the moon with it. And then they, they went to the, the, the moon program. But that's really what it was about. It was about 
building intercontinental ballistic missiles. We got a moon program as a spin-off. <laughs> and then they sell it to the public as some altruistic space exploration. Right, but it was really the development of the rockets that was important. Okay, so let's let's project forward then. Uh, this, uh, you know, being on Mars and all this stuff, the rover, is that about militarization as well? No, uh, although they use military rockets to do that. The military still gets to uh, to test their rockets when we send something to Mars or to Pluto. Those are the most powerful rockets we have, and they do come from the military. But... Um, those those missions, the robots are really good science. I mean, that, that's where the best science is happening in space. The human program, you know, it's awfully expensive. We spent a hundred billion dollars on the space station. It's a wonderful project, but the amount of science that's come out of that is nothing compared to the robots that we've sent to every planet in our solar system. So I think that is good science, and it should be left alone because it's it's a lot cheaper than what we're spending on the other parts of the space program. But now we have a new player. We have a new player, which is the private sector. We have Elon Musk with SpaceX. We have Jeff Bezos with uh, Blue Origins. And they're going to do it commercially. They're going to sell seats and do it in a financially profitable way. All the power to them. And if they want to go to Mars, do it. Let's let's do it. Why, why, why be spending so much money? I'd like to see the space program get out of the hands of the government. Let the government do the really risky stuff like develop new propulsion systems, new plasma drives or warp drive or something, and let the commercial sector take over the everyday thing of going up to the space station, going to the moon or Mars. I think that's going to happen. I think the complete corporatization of the planet will happen. I watched Alien for like the umpteenth time the other day again, and that's where I see that going. You know, you have the company, and you go to these different planets, and you mine them. Yep. Yep. Well, that's the way we've explored the Earth. I mean, why why did Columbus and Magellan and Cook and all those folks set out? It was to find resources in the East. It was to find resources or, or in, in the West, you know, like find new resources and bring them back. And they did. You know, they brought back gold. They brought back tobacco. They brought back lots of stuff. That's what it was. It's about exploiting resources. Now, we don't have a good history of that with Native folks along the way. But that's going to happen in space, too. So we'll develop outwards. 